more cycles means more DNA. Now the typical PCR mix components are made up with template DNA. It is to be provided, it is variable actually to be provided to 5 to 200 nanogram. Then 1 micro, 1 millimole DNTPs, 10 microliter, uh, if we need to make the total volume of 50 microliter. This is a protocol you must, uh, if you are uh, carried out this PCR reaction uh, uh, day to day and on and on, you should have memorized all these things, but uh, I won't encourage you now to memorize. But to un for your understanding purpose, you must know template must be there, DNTPs must be there. And also for the buffer, we need water and buffer solution which must be provided. As these are the 10x buffers, we need to dilute it with water. And we need to provide magnesium chloride which is playing a very vital role. We are going to see it later. We need to provide the forward and reverse primer. And also the DNA polymerase which is the TAC polymerase, right? In 1.5 units. So this unit is very important, right? Okay. So now let us talk about the PCR optimization in different ways. So first is the buffers. Most buffers have only KCL and trees in it. Now KCL facilitates the primer binding, but concentrations higher than 50 millimolar can inhibit the binding or uh, inhibit the activity of TAC polymerase. So we need to be very careful. But KCL is important because it facilitates the primer binding or the annealing. Okay. Sometimes also you can see the presence of different types of detergents like Twin 20, Triton X100, and all these things. Uh, in the PCR reaction, it actually enhances the specificity of the reaction and also it ensures the proper binding and specific binding of the primers to the desired sequence. Second is the concentration and application of magnesium chloride. It is required for the primer binding and also it is required for the attachment of primer DNA and, uh, and the concentration of primer template association. It's very, very important because it also Im important, it, it also uh, affect the product specificity and also the enzyme activity and fidelity. So these things are taken care of. So uh, the excess of this magnesium uh, can give a non-specific binding and the too little magnesium can give a reduced yield. So you need to be very careful uh, uh, choosing the concentration of MgCl2 because excess of it will give non-specific binding and the less of it, it will give a reduced yield. Now what is the actual mechanism is that there are nucleotide sequences, uh, the DNTPs and also templates and primers uh, and the sequester and the chelate this magnesium ion. So you need to be very careful about the concentration of NGCL2. Third thing is the primer design. Now primer must have some important criteria. I'll be making a different video about how to select primers and what are the criteria to look for before selection of the primer design. Now these primers should be specific against a particular desired segment to distant against binding with a particular segment of DNA. It must have the length between 18 to 30 nucleotide sequences. The annealing temperature is from 50 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius. Though it's written from 50 degrees Celsius to 70 degrees Celsius, the actual temperature varies from 58 degrees Celsius to 60 degrees Celsius. Now the GC content of the primer must not concede from 40 to 50 or 60 degrees Celsius, 60 uh, percent of GC reach. Because if it is much more GC reach, uh, then the uh, uh, then the removal of this uh, cannot be possible. And if it is less GC reach, then it may not end with a sufficient strong bind. Now the 3 prime end is very very critical. Now the 3 prime terminal is made up with this GC content. So if uh, this G GC clamp, clamp is very important, right? We want a GC uh, or CG or any kind of GNC uh, nucleotide sequences at the 3 prime terminal because it and it will ensure the proper binding and uh, it will ensure uh, the proper initialization of the process. Right? And the self complementarity must be less because if the primers are having self complementarity, for example, say this is the primer, if it is having self complementarity, so what it can do? It can make a intra strand linkage like that, intra strand bond like that. It can make problems. Right? So 3 prime complementarity is an important fact. And also 3 to 4 bases similar to other primers must not be there. Okay, so these things must be present in all these cases. Okay. So uh, we need to think about these uh, concepts before designing the primer. Now the fourth part is the cycling conditions. Uh, first thing is the denaturation. Some TAC polymerase uh, require initial denaturation, which is a hot start. So we need to provide them the hot start. Sorry, we need to provide them the hot start. Uh, so at the very beginning, we need to provide them with uh, 
higher temperature uh, like 94 degrees Celsius temperature and so and second thing is the annealing temperature annealing temperature must be uh, less than 5 degrees Celsius of the TM or the melting temperature of the primers right so th suppose this is our host DNA and say this is our primer is attached to the host DNA now there must be a melting temperature of this uh, primer DNA conjugate okay so we must provide less than 5 degrees Celsius temperature of uh, 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 less than 5 degrees Celsius temperature of the melting temperature of this conjugate right so this is a melting temperature TM is a melting of this DNA uh, primer hybrid now you need to provide some temperature which is less than 5 degrees Celsius if we increase this temperature if uh, this melting temperature of DNA primer hybrid and the annealing temperature remains the same then it will not ensure proper binding of primer with a host DNA. So we need to be very careful about all these things. So before ordering any kind of primer and looking for any kind of primer, we must understand the melting temperature of that primer with the DNA. Okay. Decrease in annealing temperature result in non-specific binding. This is the first thing. It results in non-specific binding. And increase in annealing temperature is a rest, uh, result in the reduced yield. Okay, so decrease in annealing temperature, non-specific, and increase. So you can see in all these cases, uh, the margin of error is very less because in all these directions, if we increase the temperature a little bit or decrease the temperature a little bit, it will end up with uh, very bad effects, right? So you need to maintain the temperature in a balanced way in all these directions. Now the last thing is the cycle number. Now normally the cycle number theoretically can be from 50 to 40 cycles. Now theoretical yield uh, for this PCR reaction is 2 to the power n and we have seen it before. So theoretically what happens this, uh, this number of PCR, number of the PCR product will increase with time like a logarithmic scale like a straight line increase like that. But actually it doesn't happen because it was seen the half life of TAC polymerase is 30 minutes at 95 degrees Celsius temperature. So if you are continuously utilizing this TAC polymerase at 94 degrees Celsius temperature for uh, the uh, 70 degrees Celsius uh, uh, temperature for the elongation process and also we provide this temperature uh, because because remember at the very beginning start of the very beginning the TAC polymers are in this mixture and at the very beginning we use 94 degrees Celsius temperature for denaturation of the DNA and at this 94 degrees Celsius temperature TAC polymers are still in our master mix. So it is uh, it is uh, forced to leave in this 94 degrees Celsius temperature for each one minute during the cycle. So after 30 cycles, this TAC polymerase will be no longer functional. Not actually no longer functional, but the functional efficiency of this TAC polymerase will go down dramatically. So for it is, as a result of this uh, loss, loss of efficiency of TAC polymerase, we will result in a fall of the amplification product of PCR. And we get a almost straight line uh, or stationary phase reaching uh, after the 30 cycle. So until the 30 cycle, uh, the product increase uh, from the 28 cycle and 26 cycle to 30 cycle, we are going to see a logarithmic increase. But after that, uh, it will stop increasing. Okay, so this is called uh, the Plechiaou effect uh, of PCR amplification. Okay, so in some